Hello, wonderful person, and happy International Women's Day. Today is uh, March 8th, or was March 8th for you if you're watching this from a time zone where I am as well. And I figured, well, let's actually talk about something related to women. Well, okay, not really. We're going to be talking about Venus, traditionally seen as the planet where women are from. Just kidding. Anyway, so today I'm going to talk about why Venus is one of the few planets out there that has absolutely no moon. Why this planet is absolutely alone and why this planet is so intriguingly interesting. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this supremely, extremely hostile environment of Venus is fascinating to us for many different reasons. You may actually have heard that uh, we've landed on Venus uh, several times, well not we, but uh, the Soviet Union specifically. They sent a few probes here that uh, survived for a few minutes and one of them survived for about two hours before basically completely disappearing and being destroyed by extremely, extremely high temperatures and extremely, extremely high pressures. The pressure here is over 91 times the atmospheric pressure on the surface of our planet Earth, and the temperature here is usually over 450 degrees Celsius. Now, we're going to be talking about something else, though. There's another mystery that Venus has, and that's, of course, related to the moons of different planets. Now, we're going to go into a simulation known as Solar System, with all of the major moons put into it. So, um, we know that basically pretty much every planet, and uh, even some dwarf planets, and even some asteroids, have moons orbiting around them. So, there's Neptune and its beautiful Triton. There's there's Uranus with its four moons named after Shakespearean characters. Uh, there is uh, Saturn with Titan in orbit around it. And finally, there is Jupiter and its four Galilean moons as well. Now, even Mars has moons. Uh, Mars has two tiny moons known as Phobos and Deimos. And where is Mars? Mars is right there. I don't know if they actually will be included here, but yes, they are. Look at that. They're even um, included in this simulation as well. And of course, Earth has the moon moon. M the moon by the name of moon. That's basically where the word moons are from. Now, it just so happens that Mercury doesn't have one, and we'll talk about this in the future, but neither does Venus. And it's very, very unusual because Venus, in every other sense of the word, is very, very Earth-like. If you actually look at Venus, it's not very different from Earth, other than, of course, the fact that it's a basically a definition of hell. It's super hot, super deadly, and you'd probably survive here for like a second, if even. Uh, one thing about Venus, though, is that, or I guess one major difference um, about Venus is that if I were to remove the atmosphere here, you would see that it spins very, very slowly. It's kind of hard to tell, actually. I'm going to accelerate time here just to show it to you. It spins very slowly and basically in the opposite direction to its orbit. So even though it orbits this way, it actually is spinning the opposite direction, or basically it, it, it spins so slow that it looks like it's, it's spinning the opposite direction. And that's actually kind of the reason or possibly a potential hint on why Venus has no moon. Now, let's actually go through history of the creation of this planet or at least the uh, earlier stages of this planet, just to kind of understand why uh, there is no moon anymore. And I'm saying anymore because there's a hypothesis or possibly even a theory that Venus once actually did have a moon. So, a long time ago, and we're going to, uh, to go about 4.5 billion years ago, Venus was just born. Basically, it kind of looked like this. It was a very beautiful terrestrial planet with water on its surface. I'm going to actually remove the clouds here, or the atmosphere here, just so you can actually see what it looks like. It might actually had a little bit less water than, than you see right now. So there were continents, there was water, it was very, very terrestrial. And this was uh, all about 4.4 uh, 4 to 4.5 billion years ago, when all of the planets were still young. Now, then, uh, a few hundred million years later, um, there was a period known as the uh, Late Heavy Bombardment. Uh, this is when essentially Earth received the huge, huge collision that created the moon, and it's also where a lot of other planets received a lot of collisions, and things basically were kind of uh, very, very hostile 
in the solar system. And, and it, statistically speaking, it's very, very likely that a few things smacked into the into Venus as well. We think that the reason why it's spinning the opposite direction and it's spinning so slow, or one of the reasons at least, is that it actually received a collision. But it's very likely that there were at least two collisions, and this is why. So statistically or mathematically, Venus may have been hit several times. And let's actually just initiate this right now. We're going to uh, collide a smaller object into Venus. And so this is uh, over 4 billion years ago. Here comes the Venus Collider that's going to basically um, create a bit of an explosion here. And what will happen is that it's very likely that, first of all, Venus will change its orbit, change its spin, but also this huge cloud of stuff that starts orbiting around Venus will very likely coalesce into an actual moon. And so at this point, Venus is still actually spinning in normal direction, just like every other planet. So we're going to change its uh, rotational period. And so now it starts spinning a little bit faster and it's also basically going to acquire a moon. So let's just put a moon here just to simulate uh, the creation of the moon. Now, there is that vein of Munus orbiting around it as, the, as Venus basically cools down and um, they kind of start orbiting and spinning in the same direction. And so right now Venus is actually spinning in the same direction as the moon here and they're basically rotating in the same direction as well as um, essentially their orbit. So this is what um, Earth is doing as well and this is kind of what Earth system looks like right now. Now, over time, uh, this moon started to be kind of pushed out to the outskirts uh, because of the tidal force interactions. And these same tidal forces are actually responsible for um, the moon effects on our own moon uh, from our Earth. So moon is actually slowly moving away from, from Earth because of the tidal interaction with our Earth. And then one day it's actually going to fly away and disappear. Uh, but uh, this is not what happened to the moon of Venus, because otherwise we would have probably found it somewhere. What we think happened is that there was a second collision, and this second collision changed the spin and the rotation of Venus once again. So here comes the second collision that is going to basically initiate another change in uh, the orbital parameters of uh, Venus. Okay, that collision was not big enough. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's send Aries at it. And there we go. That's what I was waiting for. So here, this will also change the uh, rotation of Venus once again. And so now it's going to start spinning the opposite direction, but its rotational period is going to be very, very, very slow. So it's actually going to be moving really, really slowly, but basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's now producing a huge, huge tidal effect on its moon that is um, actually going to be taking away some of the momentum from this moon. So, so what Venus is actually going to be doing now is taking away the energy, the movement energy from um, this moon. And because of that, Venus moon, instead of flying further away from the planet, is actually going to start moving closer and closer to it. Now, this effect is very well known. It's actually the same reason why one day Triton, the moon of Neptune, is going to collide with Triton as well. And so here, within about 10 million years, uh, the orbit of Venus moon will actually decline to the point where it's actually very likely going to collide with the planet. And we think this is exactly what happens. So it's possibly, uh, first of all, it possibly turned into the uh, ring. Uh, so at some point, Venus probably had rings. Uh, so it, it started orbiting around Venus so close that the Roche limit or the Roche effect broke it into little pieces. And then those little pieces fell onto the surface of the planet. And basically the entire moon was destroyed completely. Now, all of this is, of course, a hypothesis, so this is not really a theory, but this explains several things. One of those things is, of course, the fact that um, this is why Venus is spinning in the opposite direction, because of that collision that it just experienced. But at the same time, because it spins in the opposite direction, any moon that would have been formed around Venus would slowly dissipate and would slowly lose its uh, orbital parameters and basically it would disappear. And so even if there was a moon, and it's, it's possible that there was actually a moon at some point, it would now be completely gone because Venus is just not really good at keeping those moons because of its opposite uh, rotation. So this would take away a lot of kinetic energy and would then basically turn 
uh, th this particular planet, Moonless. Now you can see that the water has returned, but because it spins in the opposite direction now, and because it spins so slow, Venus will now lose any magnetic field that it may have had. And no magnetic field means one thing, that water cannot be protected, and so all of the water will start breaking apart and disappearing, and uh, a lot of carbon dioxide will start getting released on the surface of the planet, and so eventually the temperature will skyrocket dramatically, making this basically the hottest and the most extreme planet in our solar system. Well, and that's it. That's really all I wanted to say in this video. I wanted to kind of give you an idea of why uh, this particular planet doesn't seem to have a moon and why Venus is the way it is today. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. Come back tomorrow to learn something completely different and possibly watch me play a video game. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And Venus... Is it going to experience a little bit of an explosioning because I kind of really like this effect. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at the gorgeous, beautiful explosion effects that this game creates if you press the explosion button. Anyway, enjoy the Star Wars effect that I've just created. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.